There you go. Okay, we're going to record this so that in case something happens with your Wi-Fi, as what happens many times in the Philippines, <laughs> um, don't worry. You're going to be able to access the recording of this session because we know that uh, that is almost a usual thing that many times we encounter problems with the connection. Thank you again for joining us. My name is Man Rentoy, M-A-N-N-R-E-N-T-O-Y, Rentoy. I've been a teacher for the last 34 years, and um, I am the president of Catalyst for Professional Development Services, which is a group that champions character formation in uh, the Philippines. I have been going around the Philippines giving seminars to teachers, parents, and community leaders pushing character formation. The bottom line is I want to make people make character formation a top priority, given that that is where the crisis is today. We see problems of uh, character among many of our students, and um, this is... Um, solved by uh, making people realize that um, we have to make character formation a top priority and it is a job of every good educator okay if um, i know many of you are catechists or teachers and um, that is our job our task is not just to cover the curriculum we are not just here trying to teach a subject. We are here raising young people to be good men and women. Okay? So effectively, my principle, our principle is every educator is uh, an agent of character formation. But the past uh, few months, we have concentrated especially on helping fellow teachers in Catholic schools. That's why our session today is geared towards especially helping our fellow um, teachers in Catholic schools to be able to form our students to grow up to be good men and women and good Catholics who are in love with their faith. That's what we want to do. I um, have a PhD in literature from the University of Santo Tomas, where I also took my MA in creative writing. And that's where I also finished AB journalism and AB literature. I founded a school in Iloilo City called Westbridge School, which is a sister school of my alma mater, Southridge School. That's where I finished high school. I was one of the first graduates there. And so when I went to Iloilo in 1991, that's the main thing I did to set up a school, which is now one of the top schools in Region 6. It's an all boys school. Um, and then later I went back to my alma mater, South Ridge, where I served as um, principal of intermediate school, vice principal of high school, and also religion department chair. So today we're going to talk about how to make our students develop etiquette and social refinements. And this is very crucial um, etiquette <laughs> because I noticed this is many times a problem among many young people today. No, diba parang, <laughs> parang um, nawawala ang uh, etiquette and good manners. Kaya naman ang DepEd, pinag-uusapan nila nitong mga nakaraang taon, ay dapat nating ibalik ang GMRC at Values Education. Yan. Well, um, this is a very important uh, task that we teachers have. Kahit anong subject ang tinuturo, ang tinuturo natin, kailangan turuan natin ang mga bata matutong mag-thank you, mag-sorry, mag-please. Um, magbigay ng respeto. Yan. In other words, we teachers are not just hired to cover the curriculum. Alam niyo kung anong pinakita ng pandemia? The pandemic showed us that young people <laughs> can learn any, anything and everything in the internet. I mean, everything 
that um, they need to learn about science, English, math can be found already in the internet. Diba? So, um, para bang uh, hindi na nila kailangan ng teacher? <laughs> Lahat ng modules online na. Lahat ng kailangan nilang pag-aralan nandiyan na. Merong mga recorded lectures, may mga recorded talks, recorded classes. But the internet cannot teach hard work, respect, responsibility, kindness, charity, love for the faith, love for the... So, that's where we come in. We teachers must work on helping the young people be good and do good. Okay? This is what is more important when the students go back to our classroom. Whether it is a catechism classroom or science classroom, English classroom, religion classroom. We have to help the young people not just know the curriculum which is already available in the internet <laughs> which are which um, the lectures we give them you can find them recorded already in youtube and it's just a matter of searching the right um, looking for the right websites no pero hindi kayang ituro ng internet ang pagiging mabait tayo yun we teachers are the ones who will have to work on helping the young people be good and do good. And then, refinement and good manners, right conduct, that's what we are more concerned about. So what is etiquette? Etiquette is defined this way. The conduct of pro or procedure required by good breeding or prescribed by authority to be observed in social or official life. Now, since ang pag-uusapan natin ngayon is etiquette and social refinements for Catholic students, then we will focus on what our students in a Catholic school in a Catholic school or our students who are Catholics should especially develop. And as you are going to see, it starts in the first place with the way we deal with the sacred. Yan. Etiquette and refinement in the way they deal with what is sacred, the mass, the church, um, dealing with the priests, the um, religious. These are the things that we're going to talk about uh, today. And the reason why we included this is because etiquette and social refinements are in crisis. They're in crisis. Kasi nga naman ito mga kabataan ngayon, ano, para bang ang kanilang mundo, what is being emphasized is just do what you like. Uh, just uh, don't let anybody dictate on you. Ayan, di ba? Or uh, just follow your heart. Ganito yung kanilang mga laging naririnig. Um, the young people today can be exposed to so much media content, whether it is in television, or internet, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, social media, Netflix, uh, cable TV. Yan. Nung bata ako, tatatlo lang ang channel. Ano? Uh, wala kaming problema about sleep. Kasi tatlo lang ang channel, nagsa-sign off pa. So tulog na kami by 10 o'clock. Wala ka na makikita sa television. But the young people today can be spending the whole night and even uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., they can wake up and there are still hundreds of channels to choose from and more than a billion videos to watch in YouTube. And all these come with hundreds of hours of commercials, advertisements. YouTube na lang, ano? minsan manonood ka, manonood ka lang ng uh, um, kahit na maikling video lang yan. Ay bay, bag, bago mo mapanood yon, kailangan manood ka muna ng 6, 7, 11 second commercials na kung hindi mo pipindutin pa yung skip ad, eh, you're going to be subjected to many more hours of commercials. And all the commercials are really just all about 
please yourself, satisfy yourself, drink, um, enjoy, uh, just do it. Lahat ng commercials are all about just giving in to one's um, sensuality, to one's desires. <laughs> And all these are bringing about a crisis in good manners and right conduct. And then you watch cartoons. Abay, kahit animation yan, kahit cartoons, you see many things that are not about the goodness and kindness. Movies with a lot of violence and sex. Vulgarity. So this is the reason why, my dear fellow teachers, catechists, um, people concerned about the character, my dear fellow Catholics, This is the reason why I started in the Philippines this uh, institute uh, that is based in the State University of New York, the Center for the Fourth and Fifth Arts Asia. Our principle is every human being, aside from knowing reading, writing, arithmetic, should have respect and responsibility, the fourth and fifth arts. And these two are in crisis respect responsibility i think you will agree with me when you say when i say that uh, ibang klasing mga bata na ngayon ano di ba ibang klase na ang kanilang attitude ang kanilang behavior um marami sa kanila hindi na marunong rumispeto <laughs> dati pagka masalubong mo ang teacher sa corridor abay halos sa uh, mag genuflect ka <laughs> sa pagbigay ng galang pero ngayon, sometimes I, before the pandemic, I used to visit schools around the country. I've given seminars to more than 75,000 teachers and community leaders and parents around the Philippines. And, you know, um, I visited so many schools. Minsan, maglalakad ka sa corridor. Many students will ignore you. They will not even stop to greet good morning, good afternoon. Parang iisipin mo, ay, Asa na yung respect that we used to hear a lot about, um, that we used to be trained to do or to show towards elders. No? Yan. That is in crisis. So that's the reason why I thought that's a perfect institute to bring to the Philippines. Center for the Fourth and Fifth Arts, pushing respect and responsibility, otherwise known as the Dr. Thomas Licona Institute for Asia. So here are, for those of you who may have attended some of my seminars on how to create a kind and caring classroom, how to develop grit, resilience, and empathy. Those are the usual seminars na binibigay namin or um, how to uh, teach for character. Kahit anong subject ang tinutuduan mo, there are many strategies that we can use in order to teach virtues, values. So, um, some of these slides, the first three or four that I'm going to show now, um, you may have seen if you have attended some of my past seminars. While we may be producing a smart, self-assured generation of young people, ang mga kabataan ngayon are also the most self-centered and stressed out on record self-centered do you agree can you type agree if you agree that the young people today are so self-centered do you see that also among your students among the people in your uh, um, class okay i see so many agree um, it's okay if you disagree Maybe you are teaching in a uh, school that is exempt from original sin. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just kidding. Yes, sabi ni Daniel Bernardo, self-centered, stressed out, and self-entitled. Correct. Self-entitled. Dati ang mga estudyante magsasabi, Ma'am, may I have a uh, paper, please? Pero ngayon, ang mga bata, aba hindi ganun magsalita. I don't have paper. Yan, nag-distribute ka ng, uh, ng test paper. Ano? Tapos pagka hindi nakakuha ang isang bata, na in the olden times, aba, with a lot of respect, sasabihin niya, uh, may I have a, uh, a test paper please? I didn't receive. Aba ngayon, hindi. Sir, wala akong nakuha. 
Aba, talaga naman. Ha? Para bang, uh, ay, sorry na, sorry na. Ito, ito ang paper mo. <laughs> so, it's true. The young people today are most self-centered according to research. According to experts in the study of um, the psychology of the young t- uh, people of today. Self-centered. Punta ka sa kanilang Facebook. Ay, 175 selfies. Yung picture ng mukha nila in all angles. May mga pa ganyan-ganyan. May mga pa, uh, pa-cute faces. Parang isipin mo, bakit ang dami mong picture dyan? Ang pangit-pangit mo naman. Wala ka namang hitsura. Ganyan. Ano ba? <laughs> Pero that's the world they're living in. The world is telling them, express yourself. Um, show yourself. Um, don't allow anyone to... Um, Anong tawag dyan? Yung to shame you. Mataba, mapayat, hangid. You express yourself and let the world see you as you are. Okay, very nice. On one, on one hand, okay, that's a positive thing. Pero it also goes to the other end, which is vanity, self-centeredness. Uh, like as if they're the center of the universe. Yan. And that's the kind of world that they're living in. But let's not forget, According to research, they are also the most stressed out. Anong ibig sabihin ng stressed out? Ayoo nga, nung bata ako, wala naman yung math kumon, yung kumon, or um, tutorials, um, or yung um, piano lessons. <laughs> May mga ganyan mga parents, ano? parang uh, they want their kids to be ahead of their batch. Uh, ahead of their level, ahead of their age. And so they make them um, do advanced classes, uh, extra classes. Alam nyo, nung bata ako, wala naman yung mga ganun. <laughs> um, pag walang klase, aba, edi we played in the streets. We climbed trees. We climbed the sample tree. Uh, nagpulot kami, nag, um, kumuha kami ng mga duhat sa puno. Ayan. We knew how to Um, enjoy ourselves. <laughs> Pero hindi. Ngayon, a kid wakes up on a Saturday morning and the first thing he will ask is the gadget if he doesn't own his own uh, cell phone or tablet yet. E lalo na ngayon nag-pandemic, classes online. And so now most of the kids have their own computer, um, tablet, or gadget, or cell phone. And that is contributing to self-centeredness but also being stressed out. Nakakapagod mag-video games, ha? <laughs> Nakakapagod na buong araw wala, wala silang ginagawa kundi maglaro sa harap ng computer. That can be very tiring. That can be very exhausting. And many of them experience that. So that is the kind of world that they're living in. And then they are subjected to a lot of culture of hate in the internet, in Facebook, in Twitter, in Instagram, in TikTok. Bashing. Diba? You, you read a lot about uh, bashing. People being bashed. Um, and then thousands of comments there, negative comments against a person. Ang feeling nila, they are all entitled to contribute to the bashing Um, I think muna, you only see the other side, I mean one side of the um, issue. Hindi kaya may backstory dito. Yan. And yet, even before they get to know the complete story, wala na. They already get to contribute to the hatred, to the bashing, to the negative remarks. Many of which they will not, absolutely not say face to face. To that person. That's what you call the anonymity of the screen. Eh bakit po sinulat yun? Eh kasi hindi naman siya makakagante. That's the anonymity of the screen that has fostered a lot of uh, culture of hatred. And then there is the glorification of the vulgar. Yeah. I always talk about this. You go to Spotify and you will see many top songs in the global charts. Meaning to say, songs that are most popular in many parts of the world, 
explicit lyrics nakasulat doon or contains explicit language you go to netflix the um, ratings are like that no or the um, movies teleseries television shows that um, have sex violence vulgar language um, so that's the glorification of the vulgar that is what the young people are subjected to and of course we talked earlier about being self-centered being so absorbed with themselves self-absorption epidemic and all these things are contributing to the crisis crisis in social relations in etiquette in good manners and right conduct nakakalimutan ng maraming kabataan ang ibig sabihin ng pagiging mabuting tao <laughs> because what they see in television shows in Netflix movies in the blockbuster movies that they see with a lot of violence and sex is all about vulgarity it's all about the, the mm, good manners and right conduct become uh, in crisis so sabi ng research teens are now 40% lower in empathy than three decades ago. And in the same period, narcissism, pride, self-centeredness, vanity, love for oneself has increased 58%. All these have contributed to the crisis. That's why we're talking today about paano natin matuturuan itong mga kabataan to still have etiquette and good manners. Um, sabi ni Fred Astaire, the hardest job kids face today is learning good manners without seeing any. Kulang sa role modeling din. No? And um, every now and then, makakabasa tayo sa newspapers before ng uh, teacher na uh, yung naninigaw, nananakit. Resorting to shouting, screaming, and yelling. When, teka muna, this is supposed to be the one teaching kindness, respect, uh, self-control. Yan. And now that everyone, everyone has um, a camera because the cell phones now have camera. Yeah, they catch this in video and it goes viral and you have thousands of people. Um, that's what we are seeing now. I go back to what, uh, what I always say in all my seminars on character formation. There is only one way to teach character. The powerful example of the adults. The powerful example of the teachers. And so if we want our young people today to know etiquette and social refinements, then they will have to see it in us. That's what we're going to talk about today. Etiquette and social refinement for Catholic students. Now, for Catholic students, okay, so these are Christians. And when you say Christians, they are followers of Christ. And the young people have to learn it from us who are transmitting not just a curriculum, not just a syllabus. We are transmitting faith, love for the faith love for our Catholic faith to our students. So first strategy, my dear fellow catechists and teachers and adults who are role models, gusto nyong magkaroon ng etiquette at social refinement ang mga kabataan, ipakita natin sa kanila yon. In the first place, we never resort to shouting, screaming, yelling. We never resort to foul language, bad words. Eh, Mr. Antoy, talagang matigas ang ulo ng bata. Kailangan na talagang sigawan. Kailangan na talagang pagsabihan. Kailangan. I, I have met teachers who are like that. Ang feeling nila, the harsher they are, the more disciplined the student will become. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> the harsher you are, the harder you will have a hard, uh, you will have a, um, the harder it will be for you to pass on. Etiquette, social refinement, kindness, virtues, values. 
and then to put the icing on top of the um, the cake the love for the catholic faith the um, pureness of the um, catholic spirit that we want to pass on to our students so by this shall all men know that you are my disciples <laughs> we know this we've heard this jesus was the one who said this um, so what I said earlier, there is no other better way to teach character than to do the powerful example of our life. Bueno, there is no other better way to make young people become disciples of our Lord except to do the powerful example of the life of a teacher, of a catechist, of a formator. Many, many times throughout this presentation, I will request everyone, all of us, I include myself, to pause and then to ask, how am I living this? Am I an example of a model disciple of Christ to my students? Am I able to transmit the love for the Catholic faith to do my example, to do the example of my life? Um, because this, in the end, is the most important thing about the seminars that we are offering this next 10 days. I mean, we started yesterday. Today is the second of 10 seminars. The most important thing about all this is that we ourselves become bearers of Christ so that the students see Christ in us. And that's what I need to emphasize most. And that is what we need to keep on reminding ourselves about throughout the 10 days of this series. May people see Christ in us. Podcasting, because we want people to hear Christ through our words, to do the things that we say. Um, the, um, on the last day, I'm going to talk about the powerful, uh, I mean, the Marian apparitions as a powerful way to make uh, students fall in love with the Catholic faith. The, the same, what we are transmitting to the students is our deep love for the Blessed Mother, making use of those apparitions throughout the centuries. But we have to be in the first place, bearer of that great love for the mother of God if we are going to make our students fall in love too with our blessed mother you know the um, yung baller that <laughs> naging sikat ano uh, naging fad <laughs> uh, many people started wearing the WWJD what would Jesus do <clears throat> it's a very nice reminder really for teachers too I mean teachers especially if Jesus were the one teaching inside a classroom, in the catechism class, in the Sunday school, what would he do? How would he teach? Actually, that was one of the um, topics we covered in another previous series no? for uh, teachers of Catholic schools. Um, teaching like Jesus through stories, through parables, um, with excellence, yeah, because that is most likely how Jesus would teach if he were alive today, if he were in the classroom today. But what I'm saying now is, yes, you, mom, sir, sister, brother, you are the Jesus <laughs> that the young people are looking for. They have to see Jesus in us, in the way we teach, in the way we transmit the faith to them, in the way we try to make them develop etiquette and social refinements from the example of our life and then from what we're going to teach them, from what we're going to pass on to them. You remember what the Bible tells us, the gospel tell, uh, tells us? Little children were flocking to Jesus. To the point that the apostles had to had to get them out because, well, kids are kids. They must have been mobbing yung pinakakaguluhan si Jesus. But you know, uh, knowing kids, knowing kids, they would not have flocked, mobbed 
Jesus. They would not have come close to Jesus if they didn't see in him kindness, charity, affability, amiability, likability, goodness. He was very attractive even to innocent kids because they saw, not because of what he was preaching, because most likely uh, they might not have easily understood. Uh, okay, they heard the stories, the parables, but the parables needed a bit more um, sophistication in thinking to be able to appreciate it fully. But what attracted the kids was because they saw Jesus being very kind, being very nice, affable, amiable, likable, goodness. Am I saying, therefore, we religion teachers, we teachers should be kind, charitable, affable, amiable, likable, good? Of course, <laughs> that is how we will be able to transmit solid Catholic faith, the pure spirit of Catholicism to our students when they, in the first place, see Christ in us. We go back to the earlier slide that I showed. Okay, uh, this picture is going to appear very frequently throughout the presentation. It simply means we examine ourselves. It's good to consider, I mean, to think, am I likable? Am I amiable? <laughs> Do the students uh, see kindness in me? Sure, there are some teachers na ang feeling nila kailangan uh, stricto. Yan. Kasi ang mga kabataan ngayon, pagka nakita nilang uh, uh, sweetie-sweetie, smiley-smiley ka, they will take advantage of you. Ganyan ang uh, minsan uh, natututunan ng mga teachers. Ano? That's wrong. <laughs> I mean, um, there's nothing wrong with smiling. If you happen to have attended my, my session on classroom management, once and for all, you can solve that discipline problem. It's probably my most uh, popular uh, seminars. It's the one that I've given most um, among all the 29, 30 modules we have in Catalyst. That one on classroom management is the one that has been requested uh, most of the time. And one of the things I say there is we have to welcome our students on day one as they enter our classroom for the first time with our biggest, widest, fakest smile. Okay, that is <laughs> a joke about the fakest smile. But uh, that's the point. We should not be afraid of welcoming them with our warmest smile. And we are not afraid that they are going to take advantage of that because we will learn the strategies on how to get your students do what you want them to do without ever having to resort to shouting, screaming, and yelling. And it's a two-hour uh, solid presentation on strategies on what we can do, teachers, to manage the class um, so that we will not have to shout, scream, or yell, and we can make them do what we want them to do. So then, if you have that wrong idea na kailangan stricto ka, kailangan huwag kang umiti, kasi kung hindi, the students will take advantage of you. Well, uh, let me correct that already. That's a wrong idea. And I'm not the one saying it. I'm just quoting Dr. Harry K. Wong, the author of First Days of School, which has sold more than 5 million copies. <laughs> the most important and most popular and most successful book on classroom management. So, we welcome our students with a smile, making it very clear to them, I'm so glad to see you. I'm so happy to have you in my class. We are going to have a great year. You're going to learn. We're going to learn together. You're going to become better human beings after this school year. Th that's what we should be transmitting. And this picture is telling us, examine ourselves. How, how have I been welcoming to my students? How have I... Um, 
shown the face of Christ to my students? Or are they afraid of me? Or did I develop a certain reputation for being a terror teacher? <laughs> that uh, nag-uusap po sa pang mga kabataan and nagsasabi sila, nako, sana hindi ako mapunta dyan sa klase ni uh, Mrs. Uh, Batong Bakal. Sana hindi ako mapunta dyan sa klase ni Mr. Uh, uh, terrible raw yan. Nakakatakot. Na, uh, if we uh, have that kind of reputation, well, it's not too late as we are preparing for a new school year, let us learn strategies on how we can um, manage the class without ever having to be terror <laughs> teachers and then that we are able to show the face of Christ and just like what happened to Jesus during his time, young people would flock to us. They would like to be in that class. They would like to be part of our um, classroom. After all, we learned that from Jesus, the meek and humble of heart. So then, here's the key. You want your students to develop etiquette and social refinements? Let us show it to them in the way we also deal with them. For example, I always tell teachers whenever I give sessions on classroom management and class advisory, teachers, let us be the first to greet good morning. You know, pagka may nasalubong kang studyante sa corridor, may ganong teachers minsan nag-iisip, oh, sige nga, tingnan natin kung mag-greet ng good morning. Well, why? You're the adult. We are the adults. <laughs> and they have to learn it from us. And so we are the ones who first greet good morning and then let them greet back. And if, if they do not greet back, we can uh, remind them that <laughs> etiquette, Social refinement means you acknowledge, you express um, respect, you show sign of courtesy and respect by greeting, good morning, good afternoon. Eh ma'am, katatapos lang ng class, kagagaling lang namin ng classroom, nagkasalubong lang ulit kami sa corridor even if. Even if, you know, I go around the um, Philippines visiting schools because we do school accreditation uh, accreditation of schools of character and right now there are five schools in the philippines that have been given recognition as schools of character in all those five schools that we visited uh, for i mean there are many others that applied but didn't make it but in those five schools abay napaka liwanag um, students know how to greet how to be courteous, how to be welcoming. They are real schools of character because the everyone there, everyone there is trained um, to make it part of their system to be courteous, kind, caring. Whereas there are some schools, sabi ko kanina, na you walk along the corridor, you meet students and teachers and they ignore you. They don't greet. <laughs> Parang iisipin mo, ah, kaya pala. Kasi hindi ito school of character. Wala sa system nila. Hindi pa, hindi nila laging naririnig ito siguro sa announcement ng principal, sa announcement, because many times it's really leadership. No? Uh, how seriously the leader wants um, this culture, this culture of respect <laughs> um, to be there, ingrained among the people in the community. So, um, we want the students to develop this. Let us pass it on to them. And the most important step is, kailang labanan natin ang self-centeredness. Because this is the trend that the world, the, the world right now, because of social media, because of TikTok, because of Facebook, because of Twitter, because of what they read and what they see, what they watch what they listen to, even the music. All of these are fostering self-centeredness, self-absorption, and let's ch uh, target change of mindset. Here's a very good strategy. Inspire them to be saints, <laughs> to be good people. Sabi nga natin kanina, ang problema lang many times is 
siguro kulang sila ng role models. Role models. And many times, it is enough to open their uh, horizon by showing them a model. Um, and you know, this is the purpose why the, the church, the Catholic church, elevates some people to, the, uh, to sainthood. Precisely because that is the point. To show us, everyone, that, you see, we have these models and they are sure to be in heaven. We can, they can intercede for us. They can help us. I'm going to take a pause because I'm going to show you a um, four-minute video about Darwin Ramos. Can you please type in the chat box, Darwin, if you have heard of Darwin Ramos. Darwin, if you have ever heard of him. Okay, Mrs. Diana knows about Darwin. Anyone else knows about Darwin? Okay, Mila Ortega knows Darwin. Anyone else knows Darwin? Danielle Bombita knows Darwin. Very few. Okay, I'm going to introduce you to a role model for the young people today. For young people to see, ay, gusto ko rin yun. Gusto ko rin maging santo. Gusto ko rin maging malapit sa Diyos tulad ni Darwin Ramos. That's the only thing the young people need, uh, an inspiration. And then they will want to be better than how they are now. That's why it's very good to say or to tell students many stories of saints, especially ordinary ones, especially those who um, lived in the modern times, especially those who went through a lot of sufferings, difficulties. Para itong mga kabataan ngayon, ma-realize, ay teka muna, andito ako nagre-reklamo na mahina ang wifi when you have Darwin who suffered even at such a very young age. Uh, teka muna, here I am complaining na uh, walang aircon ang bahay namin. But here is someone who um, went through even tougher things in life and yet and yet succeeded in making it to heaven in going to heaven so that's the purpose of why the church elevates some people to the um, state of sanctity to um, becoming saints so that we have models to look up to and um, we have so many examples now of all these holy men and women that we can present to young people as models. Here is a fantastic website for men, for boys, the Catholic gentleman, catholicgentleman.com, which contains many articles on how to be virtuous and how to have values given the present um, crisis we see in the world today, given the challenges that face us today. Let us open the horizon of these young people to the possibility that someday you too can be that saint in the altars. But you have to struggle to be able to do it, to succeed, to get to heaven. Um, well, many times it's living their life of faith, taking their faith more seriously. Okay, so, um, you know, there's this book entitled Catholic Etiquette, What You Need to Know About Catholic Rights and Wrongs. <laughs> yung answering questions about uh, etiquettes, no? yung prop propriety, uh, appropriate things of uh, appropriate ways of doing things. Like, uh, what should you expect at a Catholic funeral mass? When is the best time to arrange for a baptism? Who is allowed to take communion at mass? Where should families with young children sit in church? Very practical things like this. No? Is it okay for a Catholic to be ninong sa kasal of a Protestant? Can Catholics attend INC services, Iglesia ni Cristo, and many more? Okay, those are all also part of etiquette. Uh, proprietary, uh, I mean, uh, appropriate behavior. But what we are more concerned about now is especially etiquette and social refinements in dealing with the sacred. 
And the most sacred of them all, of course, is the Holy Mass. The church. Going to church. So that's what we are going to tackle now. Um, and I'll show you an 800-year-old document where the church put very plainly Pano ang expectation ng behavior, ng etiquette and social refinement of Catholics in the church, our behavior in the church. And I'm going to give you just uh, three paragraphs from that document. It is fitting, sabi ng document na yon, of uh, almost 800 years old. It is fitting that he whose abode has been established in peace should be worshipped in peace and with due reverence. That is etiquette. That is appropriate behavior. Churches, then, should be entered humbly and devoutly. Behavior inside should be calm, pleasing to God, bringing peace to, be, to the beholders, a source not only of instruction, but of mental refreshment. If we are to develop etiquette and social refinement among our students, in the first place, we have to help them develop it in the way they deal with the sacred, with um, the church, with the sacraments, in a special way with the Holy Eucharist. Second paragraph that we read from it, those who assemble in church should extol with an act of special reverence that name which is above every name, that is, of Jesus Christ. That name of uh, at the name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow whenever that glorious name is recalled, especially during the sacred mysteries of the Mass. Everyone should bow the knees of his heart, which he can do even by a bow of his head. In churches, the sacred solemnity should possess the whole heart and mind. The whole attention should be given to prayer. If they cannot even live this most basic thing of dealing with the sacred in a sacred way, then they will not be able to connect that with dealings with other people, with the other um, creations of God, with the other children of God. So in the first place, we have to foster this so that when they leave the church, then they will carry that in their relationship with others. That is real, <laughs> solid formation of etiquette and social refinements. So that, I repeat, has been there for more, almost 800 years, what the church has told us of how we should deal with the sacred. Okay, in the first place, of course, in the Eucharist, the... Um, supreme sacred um, sacrament that we have. Some theologians have, have even said Jesus came into the world really in order to establish the Eucharist. Um, that is the main thing that Jesus came into this world for, to give himself to us as our food and drink, as our nourishment the Eucharist. And it is very timely. That's why uh, Sir Burns Kaasi yesterday mentioned this, that we will talk about and try to get the main points from the latest uh, apostolic letter of uh, Pope Francis, Desiderio Desideravi, Latin for I desire, I have desired. Now, I, I teach Latin in the university and it's, uh, it's like a strategy you know, that you put desiderio, desideravi, I earnestly desire. <laughs> I mean, literally, it's I desire, I have desired. But the translation is if you put the two together, as well, these are words of our Lord on the Last Supper, I have earnestly desired. <laughs> That's the title of the document um, as... Uh, found in the gospel as Jesus was about to institu um, institute the sacrament of uh, the Holy Eucharist. Here's the most important point Pope Francis mentions there. Liturgy is of first importance in our lives. God must be in first place and prayer our first duty. We're going to look at 
the main points mentioned by Pope Francis there. As many of you might know, uh, he had to come up with his letter as a follow-up to a previous document that he released, no? um, announcing, for example, that uh, let us be faithful to the spirit of Second Vatican Council as far as liturgical reforms are concerned. The issue that there are some people who prefer the traditional Latin Mass. And now Pope Francis is saying, no, come on, let us be faithful to what um, the Second Vatican Council has put in place as reforms for the liturgy. That is a more important thing, uh, that we are faithful to Peter, that we are faithful to the church. And it is very sad, it is very painful to read uh, of even people in the church attacking Pope Francis, questioning Pope Francis, or casting doubts on the Holy Father uh, just because he is insisting, let us be faithful to the spirit of the Second Va Vatican Council and let us um, live by the reforms that have been put in place. With humility, we, buy, uh, we bow down our head and say, you know, kung gusto ng Pope na lahat tayo Latin, okay, we'll do it in Latin. Kung gusto niya, we say it in the vernacular, then let's say it in the vernacular because we are more concerned about being united with the church, with the Pope, with the Holy Father who is Christ on earth. Well, St. Teresa even called him the sweet Christ on earth. And that is what we are more... Um, uh, concerned about um, that the Eucharist itself is so special, it's so supreme in its sacredness that uh, you don't need the um, trimmings. <laughs> you don't need to add the um, special ingredients. The fact that it is Jesus offering himself all over again, it's Calvary all over again whenever the Mass is celebrated, whenever the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, uh, that, that's it. Um, let us not get lost in the polemics. That's one of the things that he says in the document, Desiderio Desideravi. Okay, so I want us to go over some very salient points um, that Pope Francis talks about uh, in the um, document about the Holy Eucharist so that we know what is in the heart, in the mind of Pope Francis and what he wants us to do um, in order to develop this etiquette and social refinement. Well, in this matter, the refinement is in dealing with the, what is most sacred and that is our Lord in the Holy Eucharist. He said in the document, the, the liturgy is that today of God's saving work. Redemption continues on <laughs> because every time the Holy Eucharist is celebrated, it's like Jesus offering himself all over again for our redemption. It's like Calvary all over again, the crucifixion and the passion, death, and resurrection happening all over again every time the Mass is celebrated from the beginning of creation. These are exact, well, uh, summaries of um, points that Pope Francis gave in the document. From the beginning of creation, God has been preparing for the Last Supper of Jesus because Jesus has an infinite desire to become one with us. Communion, being com union, being really. Uh, Come when you put it with the union, it becomes the strong unity because Jesus has an infinite desire to become one with us. Everyone is invited to that supper. Here, Jesus himself is the Passover lamb that we take. How great is the gift and how small we are. Another main point that Pope Francis gave in the document, the mass is the supper of the wedding of the lamb. It's like um, um, Jesus giving himself as spouse of the church. I mean, that, because that is sometimes the title we also give. And he does it through the Mass, where he gives himself body, blood, soul, and divinity. 
and so um, we need the young people, for example, to understand very clearly uh, the doctrine of transubstantiation, the changing of the substance in the bread and wine. The accidents are the same. You know, in philosophy, that's what we study. Everything, every being has substance and accidents. Substance, that which makes it what it is. Accidents, um, the additional color, weight, size, shape, look, um, those external things, which if even if you change, um, the substance remains the same. So what happens is when the priest says the, uh, the words of consecration, that host, while retaining the accidents of being white, being fluffy like a wafer, uh, being light, uh, the substance changes. From the substance of the bread, now you have the substance of God himself present there with his body blood, soul, and divinity. And that's why now we, we will have to treat it with all the respect, all the refinement, all the etiquette, all the goodness of um, dealing with God himself. That's why we genuflect. We even double genuflect if uh, the host is already there, exposed, for example, in the altar, in a monstrance, or in the middle of the mass after consecration, we need to go to the other side of the chapel. We do double genuflection when we pass in the middle because it is God himself, body, blood, soul, and divinity present in the Holy Eucharist. The mass is the supper of the wedding of the Lamb. And to be present, there is one requirement, the wedding garment of faith. Faith. Is what we will have to, I mean, it's with the eyes of faith that we see, not the bread, not just uh, wine, but the body, blood, soul, and divinity of God himself present, Jesus present in the Holy Eucharist. Our response to Jesus' desire is to surrender to his love, to let ourselves to be drawn by him. I mean, just to think about this will make us, will make us realize that's to do. I've learned that in my catechism ever since I was a kid. But when I go to Mass, do I actually realize it? Do I actually uh, have that faith, not just to see a piece of bread, but God himself offering himself all over again for my redemption, for my salvation, to give himself as nourishment. To, to, to myself. I, I know uh, I have a friend na every time maglalakad siya sa um, aisle to go to communion, she cannot help but be moved to tears sometimes even. <laughs> Realizing that here I am being given this opportunity to receive not a piece of bread, but God, the one who lived in this earth, for 33 years, the same Jesus who was born in a stable, the same Jesus who carried the cross, the same Jesus who suffered, died, was buried, and resurrected from the for me, for my redemption, for my salvation. It's very good to frequently remind ourselves, and even every Sunday or every day, for those of you who go to Mass every day, and again, we pause and we think, that's true. Alam ko yan ah, napag-aralan ko yan sa catechism nung bata pa ako. And yet, why is it that too many times I've lost opportunity to receive the body, blood, soul, and divinity of Christ and didn't go to Mass for the slightest excuse of, I'm busy, I have work to do, um, I, I have no time, <laughs> I have no time, which is what many people say, right? I have no time. And yet, they have time to take lunch, dinner, breakfast. I, I, uh, sacred yan para sa kanila. <laughs> because uh, pag hindi sila nakapag-lunch, uh, nakapag-merienda, nakapag-breakfast, uh, ay magugutom sila. So, they treat that like a sacred obligation that they have to eat. Well, if only we realize what we are missing when we skip possibility of communion, skip 
possibility of attending Mass for one reason or another. That's why if we are to pass on love for Eucharist to our students, they have to see first in us that eagerness to commune, to be one with our Lord, to receive Him in the sacred host, in Holy Communion. So, I repeat, Catechism of the Catholic Church tells us that in the Mass, Calvary happens all over again. Jesus offers himself all over again, but this time in an unbloody manner by uh, taking up the form of the bread and the wine, the host and the wine becoming his body, blood, soul, and divinity. That is the content of the break, uh, broken bread, the cross of Jesus, his sacrifice of obedience out of love for the Father. This is all Pope Francis. So he says, the crucifixion is the act of perfect worship, the only true liturgy. The Eucharist is a memorial, a remembering of this cross where Jesus offers his body and pours out his blood. But it is not just a memorial as in um, representative or representation. In the, it's the real um, offering of Jesus all over again for us because there is the transubstantiation that happens where he takes up the form of bread and wine, but it is really him that is there. And that's the reason why it is there where we encounter Christ. That's why. That's the key to our sanctity, to our sanctification, the Holy Eucharist. In the liturgy, we encounter Jesus and the power of this Paschal mystery reaches us. In the sacraments, the reason Jesus continues to forgive us, to heal us, and to save us. These are all Pope Francis' ideas in Desiderio Desideravi. Again, we pause and we think about do I really encounter, personally, do I really encounter Jesus when I go to Mass in the readings where he speaks to us and then in our response in the prayers of the faithful and then in his invitation, take and eat. And then in my acceptance, I receive him in communion. You see, the Holy Mass is a dialogue with Jesus telling us things. We're responding. Jesus giving himself, we're receiving and then we thank him. That's why the Eucharist is thanksgiving. Eucharistia means precisely that. Do I encounter Christ in a more real way whenever I go to Mass, whenever I receive communion? Maybe, maybe young people will discover this beautiful thing that happens in Mass if we show them from our example, from our experience of really encountering Jesus that he is truly, really present there. Uh, that's why we go. The church is a sacrament of the body of Christ. That's why sometimes we say the church is the eighth sacrament. <laughs> sacrament is the external. Um, that's how we define sacrament, right? That it's an external thing that gives grace. So, the church is that. It gives grace and it's um, visible. It's um, effectively, it's like um, the sacrament of the body of Christ. And kanina pinag-usapan natin yung mga kabataan. Being so self-absorbed, being so um, uh, engrossed with themselves, the self-absorption um, um, epidemic. And then we somehow mentioned about the... Um, pornography, vulgarity, um, lower standards in morals that we see in the world today. Well, really, Pope Francis now says in the document, the liturgy is an antidote for the poison of spiritual worldliness. Our young people will be able to cope and fight against the worldliness that is engulfing them with the kind of world that they're living in right now, if we make them discover Jesus in the Holy Eucharist, the liturgy, the beauty of the liturgy. And that's why we have to put all care 
and love in the way we take care of liturgy. Um, I see many sisters here. I see many teachers here. I see many people who are from Catholic schools. And I know in Catholic schools, you're in charge <laughs> many times of the first Friday Mass or maybe even the daily Mass that there is in your, in your uh, uh, schools. Let us take care of them. That when students come to attend, they really discover the beauty of the liturgy. We put a lot of care in making sure that uh, the songs are good, uh, the songs are well done, the servers are well trained, the chalice is well kept, taken care of, um, really sparkling clean. <laughs> Because from the externals, the young people will see I, the care, the love, the devotion, the reverence that uh, sisters, the, the teachers, the school puts into these um, sacred things. This must be really very important. Pope Francis reminds us in that document, let us rediscover the beauty of the truth of the Christian celebration, that the Eucharist is something really very beautiful. So beautiful that many, many times people should be moved to tears. I mean, their heart should melt just being able to witness how well the Mass is celebrated. The priest is not in a hurry. The readers really do it very well. The sound system has been taken care of. I mean, all these things contribute to the, um, the young people being able to appreciate even more the love, the reverence, the care, the affection that we put in the liturgy, in the celebration of the Mass. An essential part of the Mass is being amazed at the Paschal mystery, the mystery of the passion of Christ, of the, his um, passion, death, and resurrection that in the Mass, the young people, because of the readings, because of the uh, homily, the commentary of the priest, the, the way it is done, the way the consecration is done with a lot of love, and all these makes the young people, all these things make the young people um, realize this is the supreme sacred uh, that has been entrusted to us. And that's why Pope Francis says in the document, please. Make the young people understand, make everyone understand very well what is happening in the Holy Eucharist, in the liturgy, the need for a serious and vital liturgical formation. We again go back to our reflection. If we are the ones in charge in our school, in our community, in our group, in our catechism class, if we are the ones in charge of this, how am I transmitting to my students, to the others, this deeper understanding and appreciation of the Holy Eucharist? Ars celebrandi, the art of celebrating, must be a particular concern of the priest, Pope Francis says in the document. In the liturgy, we encounter Jesus and the power of his paschal mystery reaches us in the sacraments. The reason Jesus continues to forgive us, heal us, and save us. I repeat what I've already mentioned earlier. And then surprisingly, or maybe not surprisingly, but Pope Francis talks about how important it is to have silence. <laughs> silence in the chapel. Silence on our part when we are supposed to be praying during the, the liturgy. It's again a very good point to examine ourselves about. No? You go to some parishes, as soon as the priest says, go, the mass is ended, and everybody starts talking. Hey, take a um, Sure, the mass is ended, <laughs> go in peace, but that doesn't mean we start making the chapel uh, like a lounge, like as if there is no tabernacle where Jesus is present with his body, blood, soul, and divinity. Um, I've attended 
functions in uh, in Rome, uh, in uh, Saint Peter's Square, or in um, the Paul the Sixth Hall. Uh, when the Pope is there, that you maintain silence out of respect. You're not going to make noise. You're not going to start talking like as if um, that import important person is not there. It's out of respect. Well, it's not just Pope Francis in the tabernacle. <laughs> it's our Lord himself. And so um, silence as an absolutely important uh, element. I was very moved by this when I went to Sri Lanka. I spent one year in Sri Lanka. And I tell you, um, I was very moved on some, attending Sunday Mass in the parish. At the end of the Mass, the priest um, gives the blessing, goes out uh, of the altar, goes to the sacristy, but everyone is silent after the Mass. Many to, sit, to kneel down and to pray. Some others, they live quietly, but there is silence. And I felt uh, like, wow, this is a world of difference from uh, what I see in Manila in, um, in the Philippines, where parang as soon as the priests go for the mass is ended, uh, parang biglang piesta. <laughs> parang biglang, um, yeah, the, the noise is like uh, as if there is no tabernacle, as, as if suddenly the place has become um, a, um, a park where everybody can just uh, start uh, excitedly talking about where do we go? So, saan tayo kakain? Sa Jollibee ba tayo ngayon? Silence. Pope Francis uh, says in the document is absolutely important. It is something grand. Take extreme care of silence, which is one of our symbolic gestures a symbol of the presence and action of the Holy Spirit. It moves us to sorrow and desire for conversion, makes us ready to hear the word, awakens prayer, and leads us to adore the body and blood. And I tell you, this is something many young people today do not experience anymore. Silence. I know many young people who go to bed with earphones on, listening to music the whole night. How can they reflect if they are not, there's no silence? As soon as they wake up, they wake up to the alarm of the cell phone. As soon as they wake up, they go to social media, which is very noisy by itself uh, with all the, um, uh, how the, the posts of their friends. It's like they are all talking uh, at the same time. They're subjected to so much noise. Netflix, uh, Spotify, uh, YouTube, um, social media, these are all noise. Kailan na sila ngayon magre-reflect where they can experience sorrow for their sins, desire for conversion, being ready to hear the word of God, awakening the desire to prayer. That's why um, I, I see many sisters here take care of those silent retreats that your students uh, should should go to before graduation. Th that's a practice of practically all Catholic schools, right? Uh, before graduation, meron silang uh, recollection or retreat. Even better, retreat, where they can spend not just two hours, but two days, maybe even three days, where there will be a lot of time for reflection, silent reflection. Liturgical year and the Lord's Day rediscover their meaning. Pope Francis says in the document, it's very important, the Dies Domini, the Day of the Lord. Um, so this refinement with Jesus in the Eucharist is the beginning of their knowing how to deal with other people with refinement, with etiquette. If they cannot even discover this in dealing with God, with a divine, with a supreme being, how can they do it or pass it on to their neighbors, to the others, to the people that God has put on their side? If we want them to develop that, let's start first in training them, really forming them in the habit of dealing with the sacred, with a lot of refinement and with etiquette. 
with that extreme social refinement because this is Jesus. This is God. This photo again reminds us to reflect have I personally, in fact, been refined in my dealing with Jesus in the Eucharist? Passing by churches, does my heart fly to the tabernacle? You know, minsan nakasakay tayo ng, ng jeepney, ng kotse. And I know very Catholic um, Philippines, ano? marami ako makikitang ganyan. Nagpagkadumaan ng uh, ang bus sa harap ng simbahan, you see many of them making the sign of the cross. Very beautiful. But even more beautiful, more than just externally making the sign of the cross, is to imagine our heart flying to the tabernacle, greeting Jesus, who is there with his body, blood, soul, and divinity in the Holy Eucharist, kept in the tabernacle. Go to the last part, which is on the um, refinement of these young people, especially in dealing with other people. We will end with this part. Um, Okay, that is a very beautiful song uh, with words written by St. Uh, Thomas Aquinas 800 years ago. <laughs> and you can find many versions of that in uh, YouTube. The best one I found was by Libera. So you can search it, Libera, Anis Angelicus, and be inspired by the beautiful, beautiful uh, song, um, Bread of Heaven. Okay. Now, let's go to refinement, um, training the young people in their refinement in dealing with other people. And this is already the um, last part. You know, um, the pillars of civility, the pillars of civilization, when people, when people are able to use words like please, yeah, they're civilized. Sorry, when they know how to, sor to say sorry, that is... <laughs> Um, being civil that is civilization being civil thank you when people know how to express gratitude and many young people today need to develop this need to hear over and over and over again and then the fourth is I give my words so those are the four please thank you sorry I give my word I usually tell the teachers, teachers, dapat sa loob ng classroom, bumabaha itong apat na salitang ito. Uh, please go back to your place now. Please pass the papers forward. Please um, bring out your pen. Let us not fail in that because that is part of refinement. And then, uh, sorry, sorry, I made a mistake about uh, number five. Sorry, I forgot to announce. Sorry, I thought you already had the handout. We have to train the students to be able to say sorry. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Thank you. Somebody recites. Thank you very much, John. Anyone else has an answer? Uh, yes, Joey. Thank you for that contribution. Thank you. Never mind if you sound exaggeratedly repeat, repetitive repetitive they have to keep on hearing from us please thank you sorry and i give my word palabra de honor when i say we have a test next week sigurado yan talagang may test when i say i'm going to give a bonus sigurado yan i give my word talagang may bonus when i say i will not give an assignment this in other words what we say we really mean we're sincere we're honest <laughs> then we are teaching them civility and then you realize these are the four things that they too need in their relationship with God. Please, Lord, give me this. Please. <laughs> That's prayer of petition. Sorry is contrition. When we say, sorry, I failed to do this. Sorry, I committed this mistake. Sorry, I committed this sin. I have to go to confession. I have to love the sacrament of confession where I can express this contrition, this sorrow for what I have done. Thank you is thanksgiving that when we go to prayer, we do not just ask for things. Teka muna, marami rin tayong dapat pasalamatan na nagising tayo ngayong umaga na we are still alive. 
na we have not lost hope that there is still a tomorrow that awaits us. Thank you. And that when we say, I give my word, that's a resolution that we are really going to fulfill what we have told God we will fulfill. Resolution. You see, these pillars of civilization are very much a part of um, training the young people in civility, in uh, right attitude and conduct, and that, um, well, they will know how to live their life um, in relation with other people because they have learned it in the way they deal with our Lord as well. Okay, well, I have reached the end of our session for today. I'm going to post now um, two things in the chat box. Here you go. Uh, let me see. The, um, I invite you to join us in the Facebook page in case you have not joined us yet. Okay, there you go. If you want a copy of the slides, there are around 20 slides that I didn't get to cover. You can download the entire presentation in the Facebook page. I already posted it there. It's already available. And then this, the recording of this session is going to be available there. Uh, just give us time to uh, process it. I'm going to stop recording now.